What is Pentecost? How does that affect us? Who are we to the Holy Spirit? Once you understand the person of the Holy Spirit and his character, you will understand that you are the most powerful human being or creation that God has ever created by the reason of the Holy Spirit. Who are you? What identity did the Holy Spirit give you? What change was brought by the Holy Spirit? How much power does Satan has over the Holy Spirit? Zero. Amen. How much power does Satan has over the Holy Spirit? Zero. And we are also going to learn the correlation between the blood and the Holy Spirit. How does the blood and the Holy Spirit relate? Amen. So, this is the week where you're supposed to be spiritually arrogant in the kingdom of darkness. You flex. You say, Satan, I just want to remind you that, uh, Lungi, come, come sit here. Just, Satan, I just want to re re remind you that uh, this week is the week that I was given more power. To trample upon serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. So, when you capture your relationship with the Holy Spirit and you get convicted on how He works in you and with you, you will treat yourself differently and behave differently. Amen. Because as we stand right now, many people are waiting to be attacked by the sickness and then say, I knew it. By the situation, they say, Ah, I knew it. Really. This, this is how it's going to be. But what is your expectation towards the Holy Spirit? And when you wake up in the morning, what is it that you expect from the Holy Spirit? When he talks to you, what does he, what does he say to you? How does he plan your day? Where does he take you? Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this evening. <sighs> Speak mighty God, we are listening. Release your word. Use me. I surrender to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to start with the book of Genesis. I'm just going to take a trip of the Holy Spirit with you. Let's start with the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 2. I'm not going to read it. Holy Spirit is presented at the Spirit of God, hovering upon what? The face of the deep. He's presented the Spirit of God, hovering where? Upon the face of what? Of the, of the deep, of the water. But he's not 
active in causing any change. He just hovering. Why? Because the word of God was not yet released. He acts on the word. He acts what? On the word. We said this last week, that last Sunday, that you cannot suffer in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Speak. Release the word. And Genesis 2, 7 we see the same Holy Spirit. The Bible said, and God breathed upon what? Upon man. And man became what? The living being. So the first sign of life of humanity is from who? The Holy Spirit. And okay, can I just stop here and ask you that question? How can we have dead seas or tombs or graveyards in our lives where as the Holy Spirit is with us and not upon us, within us. He has intertwined himself with us. Hallelujah. Ask yourself that question. The Bible said, and Jehovah God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and the breath of life. It's called the Ruha breath of the Lord. And man became what? A living soul. Again, we see the Holy Spirit. Fast forward to Genesis 15, verse 17. The whole Genesis 15, God is speaking to to Abraham. Tell him that you are blessed and all that. Abraham said, God, how could this be since I don't have a son of my own? Except this of Damascus. God said, no, that man won't be the one who will inherit your substance. You're going to have your own son. So Abraham asked God a simple question. How could this be? And God said to Abraham, I know you. I know your background. You understand covenants. You understand the blood. So this was going to happen. Cut the animals. Take the animals. Cut them. Abraham knew exactly what he was doing. He knew that God is about to enter the covenant with him. But based on his covenant understanding, he wanted God to ask him to walk between the animals because the way you entered the covenant, two people walked into the blood, pronouncing blessings and cursing that if you break the covenant, you shall be cursed. Lord, let your eyes fall off when, when you are running. Let your hands overtake your mouth. Everything, you no, know, they pronounce every curse. And if you, if you keep your covenant, may you be blessed, may your children prosper, may your children, children prosper. So when they are walking the blood, they will be pronouncing those blessings. But guess what? That evening, after Abraham cut the animals into pieces, he doesn't walk. Guess who walked? And it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a flaming torch that passed between these pieces. Who walked? The Holy Spirit. He seals what the covenant between Abraham and God. And from that day onwards, Abraham became what? God's person. Why didn't Abraham pass through the pieces? God is saying, by myself I swear. I'm not depending on you. I have done this by myself I swear. I'm depending on myself, so I will enter into this covenant even on your behalf, Abraham. You are mine, I'm yours. From today onwards, what belongs to God belongs to you. And what belongs to you belongs to me. That's the reason why when God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, 
Abraham knew the covenant. He said, oh, the day that the Holy Spirit walked, Isaac ceased to be mine. Because what is mine is God's, and what God is mine. That's the reason why he did not what hesitate to want to kill his son. But I want us to focus on what? On the flaming torch that passed. Is the, is this who? Is the Holy Spirit the sealer of the covenant between God and man. God has never left his throne. There are only two people from the God yet that came on earth. God the Holy Spirit and God the Son. But who came first? God the Holy Spirit. Are we together? That's your Holy Spirit. So, the same Holy Spirit, we're going to fast forward. We go to Exodus. The same Holy Spirit who walked between the animals is now a burning bush. He's saying to Moses, God is saying to Moses, I remembered the covenant that I've entered with Abraham, Isaac. I've came to rescue my people. So Holy Spirit is introducing God again through what? The burning bush. So the same torch that walked between the animals is reminding Moses through God of, obviously that there is a job that needs to be done. So we see the Holy Spirit taking this journey. He's taking a journey to rescue there is no single plague that was not activated by the Holy Spirit. None of them. Because he is the power here on earth. Whatever that God wants to do, he does it through the Holy Spirit. When he say, let there be frogs, frogs came. But again, the first plague, the Nile is turned into blood. The same torch that walked between the animals is saying now, hey, Egypt, the covenant is about to speak. And the language that the covenant is about to utter unto you, you're not going to like it. Let my people go. And again, we see the same Holy Spirit opening up the Red Sea for the children of Israel to, to go through. So where there was no way, he made a way. Do you know whom you carry? Do you know who is on the inside of you? He understands your relationship with God. He understands the covenant. And he knows that what's God's is yours. And what's yours is God. We cannot behave like independent candidates in the kingdom. We are covenanted people. All by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So 40 days after the children of Israel left Egypt, Exodus 23, we see them where? Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, Exodus 23, verse 18. Mount Sinai, it's where God called up Moses. Exodus 23, verse 18. God called up Moses to give him the Ten Commandments. While Moses was still there, the guy said, no, it's taking too long. Let us make ourselves a God. To cut the long story short, 3,000 died there. Who, 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 who released the judgment? The Holy Spirit. So in Mount Sinai, Exodus 23, Exodus 24, sorry, 24. Exodus, Exodus 24, verse 18. My apologies. So we see God 
we see the holy spirit again in mount sinai go down holy spirit in mount sinai the bible said the whole mountain was consumed by the fire of god and moses was called to enter into that glory again the holy spirit is there and and when did that happen after that moses took the blood and the hyssop and sprinkled it upon people and said from today onwards you are who god's people covenant and gaze who sealing that covenant the holy spirit say neighbor do you know your holy spirit say neighbor do you know your holy spirit I want us to look at uh, Exodus 24 verse 16. Let's start from 15. And Moses went up into the mount and the cloud covered the mount and the glory of the Lord abode upon the mount Mount Sinai. Okay, I don't like this version. Yeah. And the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it 6 days. On the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up the mountain and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Moses is invited to enter into the presence of the God. Holy Spirit is seen there as what as fire. fast forward we go to judges 11 with the jephtan jephtan is called by his own community to come and fight for them god anoints him for for victory and we come back and what and and, and what is god using to anoint him the holy spirit we come back we see gideon again gideon is anointed for victory god is using what the holy spirit we fast forward we go to the day of pentecost so the disciples by the reason of understanding the torah the old testament the book when the flames and the fire of the holy spirit was upon them they knew that the same fire that worked between the two pieces upon me the same fire that was burning bush that was the burning bush is upon me the same power that caused the ten plagues in egypt is upon me the same power that opened the red sea is upon me the same fire that consumed mount sinai that moses entered into that fire has entered me the same victory that was given to Gideon Jephthah and other judges is upon me so when they received the holy spirit they did not receive it like today's church we are only relating holy spirit with the speaking of tongues we are done we don't have the revelation and the historical knowledge and the movement of the holy spirit but when the disciples received him they they they, they received what firstly boldness they said no it can't be it can't be i'm carrying that power what that power that rose Lazarus from the dead is upon me now it can't be that fire that was burning in mount sinai the whole glory of the lord has entered me it can't be 
I'm too powerful. They take a walk to the temple. They see a lame man sitting by the gate. They've been passing there all along. That man was sitting there all along. They've been passing him. But this time, they remembered the Holy Spirit. They knew that the Holy Spirit came because there was the blood shed. They remembered the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power of attorney that they were given through the name of Jesus Christ. And they say to the man, silver and gold we do not have. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Guess who's the power behind making the man walk? The Holy Spirit. From then, the church became unstoppable. The first sermon of Peter Acts 2, verse 40. The Bible says 3,000 people are saved. In Mount Sinai, 3,000 people died. The same Holy Spirit who killed Acts 2, 40. The same Holy Spirit who killed is redeeming, is giving life. Genesis 2, 7. God breathed upon man and man became what? A living soul. The Ruha breath of the Lord. So now they understand that what? Jesus Christ said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'll leave you with someone like me who is the Holy Spirit. And this one Understand that the life that was in Jesus Christ was the life of the Holy Spirit in the blood. That's why the reason, that's the reason why Acts 10.38 says how God anointed the Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing what? Great things, healing those who were oppressed by the devil. Why? Why oppressed by the devil? Because where the Holy Spirit is, there is no devilic or satanic oppression. They knew that now they can do great exploits. It did not become another occasion to be celebrated. It became a life-changing experience. A mindset-changing experience. Said that wherever the disciples goes, they were accompanied by signs and wonders. They knew that the very same covenant keeping God is dwelling on the inside of them. They are no longer normal. Today's church is acting normal because we don't understand who the Holy Spirit is. We say, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, but we don't know that it took the Holy Spirit to leave Jesus Christ so that salvation can be effected. When he said, Eli, Eli, lama why have you forsaken me? Jesus never in his life has lived without the Holy Spirit. Jesus will be here, but the Holy Spirit will be all over. Holy Spirit will show Jesus Christ everything that is happening. And he's showing us that the very same spirit that was hovering upon the face of the waters, upon the face of the earth, is still hovering. He can reveal to you whatever that is happening anywhere. But start with the revelation of your life. Hallelujah. The same fire. 
Hebrews 12, 29 says, For our God is a consuming fire. <laughs> Not a burning fire. A consuming fire. Do you know who you are? Do you know the power that resides inside of you? All because of the blood. When the Holy Spirit was moving between the two carcasses of animals, he knew that this is a precursor of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. He's going to seal this covenant with the children of God. That the reason why the Holy Spirit is called what? The seal. We are sealed with the covenant of what? Of the, of the Holy. He's the seal. He's the seal. He seals your salvation. You are powerful. Speak the word of God and see change. Meditate upon the word of God and see change. Holy Spirit is not for excitement. I wish that today's church can receive him with the knowledge that the disciples had. Remember the disciples, how do I know? Every Jewish child was compelled to go to the synagogue and be taught the Torah. They knew everything that the Holy Spirit did. And when they saw the flames upon each other, they knew that a new era has begun. How can you be anointed and stay on the same era? Why can't the world see that this church, the body of Christ, is moving with the power of the Holy Spirit? Because we don't understand that the Holy Spirit is representing the life of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, Leviticus 17, 11, for the life of the flesh is where? It's in the blood. Ask yourself this question. Who am I with the Holy Spirit? Am I supposed to go through what I'm going through? Am I supposed to shortchange my life? As you are standing up, I want you to begin to declare that the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, who was that? The Holy Spirit dwells in me. And that spirit revitalizes my mortal body. That same spirit gives life to every dead situation in my life. I want you to open up yourself, even those who are watching me through, through all forms of media. I want you to open up yourself. Embrace the new relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, there is something that God told me this morning as I was praying he said, people have become too familiar with the name of Jesus. I said, no, it can't be. It's not possible. I said, why? He said, when people say in the name of Jesus and nothing happens, they, 
They just accept it and move on. Okay, it's okay. I've prayed in the name of Jesus, nothing happens. You are saying to the Holy Spirit, you don't exist anymore. Because the moment you say in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit moves. Do you want the name of Jesus to cry, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabbath, why have you forsaken me? No. The name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit are intertwined. Next time, from now onwards, when you say in the name of Jesus, have expectations. Why? Because greater, greater is he who is on the inside of you than the one who is in the world. Powered by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.